Hello everybody, welcome back to another episode of Vegan Proteins, Muscles by Brussels Radio. My name is Giacomo. And I'm Danny. And this is episode 166. Alright, so this is different. Huh? Oh yeah. Listen, some of our best conversations happen when we are on the road. So we figure, why not give this thing a shot? And if you like it, we'll start to do more of these episodes on the road and even be intentional about where we're traveling and perhaps it'll make for some better episodes. We'll see. I mean, the number of times we've been having conversations in the car, like, oh God, I wish we had the microphones. This would so be good for the podcast. Like, I can't count how many times that's happened, but it always seems spontaneous when it does happen. So I don't know, this is an experiment. We know there's a little bit of car background noise, but you know, it is what it is. We're currently driving back home from Vermont. We drove up there to see the eclipse. Like we were only a couple hours from the full eclipse. So we drove up there for that just for one night and now we're driving home. Yeah, and beautiful weather out, beautiful scenery here in New England. I don't know how much of that you'll get to see in the background over there. Not but, much, looks like. <laughs> oh well, we'll describe it to you. We're not getting into what we're talking about today. So but we, we're in like a very crazy busy week. So we have the eclipse on Monday, driving home on Tuesday. Giacomo gets his final like teeth in tomorrow, which if you've been listening, you know it's been like a year since they had to pull the old ones. And then Thursday, I have LASIK surgery on my eyes. Saturday, we're going to the Boston Marathon Expo. There's a client coming to visit on Friday and Saturday. We're going to hang out for a little bit. And then after the Marathon Expo, we're going to see the Red Sox for the first time, which is something I've wanted to do for a very long time. Oh, and on top of all of this, we are recruiting athletes from all over the world for the Vegan Strong Plant Build Team. So by the end of the day tomorrow, I will have been on 50 separate calls, many of which I'm speaking to people who I've never spoken to before and getting to know them and then obviously getting everything sorted. That way we can get ready to introduce our 2024 team, which, spoiler alert, we're going to two sporting events this year, not one. So we are, as usual, biting off a bit more than we can chew. But fortunately, we've been doing stuff like this for a while that, well, for the most part, it's going to go pretty, it's going to go good. It's going to be a lot, but, but it's going to be good. And our team this year is... Oh my gosh, these are these athletes are incredible. Like we are going to do even better than last year, I think. At least it seems like we are. So I'm pretty excited. Yeah, I'm super excited. And hopefully by the time this comes out, I'll be able to see. Yeah. Hopefully. I'm like I'm a I'm a bit nervous. I mean, I'm less nervous about the actual procedure, which I know is what freaks most people out, but I'm I'm a bit nervous that they'll like screw up my eyes worse or forever. That makes me nervous. Well, you have the flat. They're doing the flap on Danny where they do a little incision on the eye. And for me, I have much worse eyesight and my eyes are older. So they actually want to stick a lens in my eyes, which kind of freaks me out because they're going to remove my natural lens and put another they one. They kind in. of are going to do cataract surgery on Giacomo. Which, if you make it into the, your 70s, chances are you'll need it anyway. So their cell is, well, you can recover from it faster when you're younger, but it's still kind of freaks me out a little bit because it's a much more invasive surgery but but your vision is much much worse than mine it's really really bad like when you were a kid and you got tested and they asked you what letter you could read i was not able to distinguish the difference between the eye chart and the wall that's how bad it was and that was in the what first or second grade when they were doing it in the cafeteria at school and it's only gotten worse over the years yeah people probably don't know because you wear contacts all the time anyways what are we talking about today danny Today we're talking about goals and how a lot of the time people are disappointed or frustrated with the amount of time that it is taking to get to their goals. It's a big thing. Yeah, and how could you blame someone for being frustrated when they set a goal for themselves, they set a timeline to achieve said goal, they see others who are able to do it despite obstacles and hurdles, and then they look at themselves and are like, well, crap, I wanted to lose 50 pounds this year, or I wanted to lose 10 pounds in the next three months, and I am nowhere near this goal, and it's not gonna happen. It's pretty hard to not feel like a failure, and it's pretty hard to not blame yourself 
and it's pretty hard to keep going without, shoot, self-sabotaging or just giving up altogether. Giving up. Yeah, I think a lot of people give up because they're moving slower than they want it to be moving. But, you know, I really believe that all forward movement counts, even if it's slow. I actually, I actually think slower is better for most goals. That's my two cents. Right, but sometimes that's not an acceptable answer. That's not what someone wants to hear when they have big goals, big dreams, and they want the results now, and they f perhaps feel like, well, they want to push themselves or they want to be pushed and you're not doing that or they're not able to do it themselves. So it's like that gray area where, yes, forward momentum and any momentum is good momentum, but at what point do you take a good hard look at what you're doing and realize, well, shoot, this isn't the process that I want and how do I reckon with that? I mean, I think that most of the information that we have to say about fitness and changing your body is not what most people want to hear. Like, there's not much that you can say about fitness and changing your body that is what people want to hear. It's hard. It's boring. It takes a long time. Like, that's just kind of the way it is. There's smarter and less intelligent ways to do things, but that, those like three things are kind of always going to hold true. It's going to be harder than you think. It's going to require more dedication than you think, and it's going to take longer than you think. And the patterns that have repeated over the years and with your habits or lack thereof and your lifestyle are only that much harder to undo in a short amount of time when you think you're going to do it and you don't. You have to give yourself time to change. Like you could get, I mean, hypothetically speaking, let's say you do get to where you want to get to on paper. Are you going to maintain those results? And if you don't, I mean, it's easy to take a look at your past and be like, well, I'm not going to change who I was overnight. That takes time. Yeah. So I think, okay, so let me go back to what I was saying mm -hmm. before when I said I think slower is better. I think that certain things can be achieved in a really short period of time. You know, fat loss can absolutely be achieved pretty quickly, like it's possible. Uh, muscle building is only going to go as fast as it can go, unfortunately. I don't think there's anything, there's very few things you can do to really speed up muscle building. But with fat loss, like, yeah, you can lose weight pretty quickly, you know? But if you do that, nine times out of 10, you're gonna go right back to where you were. And I know that's not, I mean, short of like a bodybuilding competition where that's kind of the point, you get to where you're going, you stay there for a minute, and then you go back basically on purpose. Most people, that's not what they're trying to do. They're trying to make lifelong changes to their physique, to their habits, all of that. And if you rip it off like a Band-Aid, most of the time, you're not gonna keep it. And say you take a look at the other priorities you have in life and your other goals in life and your other responsibilities. If you just set a match and light all that stuff on fire to be able to reach your goal, well, what are the consequences to that? And are you eventually going to lose sight and be unable to achieve the goal that you were looking to achieve in the first place as far as your fitness goes? So it's not that simple. I mean, your responsibilities and priorities and goals in life, yes, it, it's all connected. And by working on one, you work on everything because you're working on yourself. But it's not that simple. It's just not that simple. Your process takes a while to change. You really got to get invested in it. It does take time. Yeah. So, you know, if you think about it, Let's say somebody's ultimate goal, like you said, is to lose 50 pounds and they want to keep it off, right? So they do some crazy intense diet, they lose 30 pounds and then they break, right? Mentally, they break. They gain back, let's be generous here and say they gain back 25 of the pounds. So now they're down five pounds, but it's been quite a while. Now they do another crazy diet, they lose another 30 or 35 pounds and then they inevitably break again and then gain most of it back. Like, it's gonna end up taking a really long time to get there that way anyway, you know? So better to kind of slow and steady it and be able to really habituate the things that it takes to get there and keep them, you know, for the foreseeable future. 
Yeah, totally. And I guess this is where you start to think about, well, aside from saying this takes time and aside from celebrating forward momentum, what do you do when you realize that your goal is at a site? Well, first, I think really when you set a goal, right, if you're setting a smart goal, one of the things about it is that it's time bound. Like there's a date or a deadline that you intend to hit this goal by. I think that it's really important to talk to somebody that knows to see if that is actually a realistic, which is another one of the things about smart goals is that they need to be realistic. Is it a realistic goal in that time frame? The goal itself might be very realistic, but the time frame might be too short. Or sometimes, you know, the goal itself is not realistic. That's a different conversation. So I think that when it comes to weight loss specifically, it's going to take twice as long as you think it's going to take. And I mean it twice as long. If you think it's going to take you six months, it's going to take you a year. If you think something's going to take you a year, it's going to take you two. Like, you know, there might be rare exceptions to that rule, but almost all of the time, that is the truth. Because everybody calculates their weight loss at one to two pounds per week. And everybody is so ambitious, they're definitely gonna be the two pounds a week person, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, first of all, in order to kind of safely be the two pounds a week person in the first place, you have to be starting at like 170, 180 pounds at least, mm -hmm. you know? If you're starting at 160, 150, 140, you, if you are the two pounds a week person, guess what? You're losing muscle yeah. at that point. No doubt. So you're not even just losing fat. But let's say, you know, you're not, you're making sure you don't lose muscle. Well, then it can't be two pounds a week. And the smaller you are along your trajectory, the longer it's gonna take to lose a pound because you're smaller, you know? Mm -hmm. And because of that, among other factors, which you know, we could talk about too, estimate yourself conservatively at the one pound a week mark. So if you want to lose 30 pounds, that's gonna take probably 30 weeks, which is, what is that? 30 divided, 30 like pounds, over, just over weeks. seven months? Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. think, and even then, it's still going to be challenging to like maintain it at that point, because a pound a week for thirty weeks, it's it's actually it's a lot, you know. So the other oh, nice strategy when you're starting to get a little burnt out on the goal, mean things meaning things are moving slower, and perhaps you're having a hard time sticking to it, is you can take a little break, if you will, in between, where you give your body a chance to be a little less pissed off at you for trying to change it so much, because even though it's clearly better for your health and it's a good thing and you're motivated and you have the willpower, your body is going to be stressed out because it's constantly in a state of change. So it's good stress, but there's only so much of it that you can tolerate without feeling like crap. And maybe it's not worth it to feel like crap for six months straight. Maybe you take a month in between and you give yourself a chance to just level out for a minute and put some more muscle on and keep and learn also, learn what it feels like to maintain your improved body composition that you already have without getting to your end goal and then you get back at it. So instead of six months, you're looking at seven as an example. Right, like building in diet breaks. Correct. I know what you're talking about. Yeah. But even if you are like, no, I don't want to build in a diet break, you're going to have a hard time finding somebody who is able to flawlessly diet for seven months mm -hmm. or seven and a half months, hard. I think is what that comes out to be. Yeah. Because guess what? Seven and a half months is a long time. You might have a vacation in there. You definitely are going to have holidays and birthdays in there. Uh, you may very well get sick a couple of times in there, and that puts you out for a week. You might just have an off week just because you're having an off week. Mm -hmm. Like when we set these goals, we're always imagining it's our best selves accomplishing these goals. Yep. But in reality, it's going to be your most average self. Mm -hmm. that is working towards these goals. It's not going to be your worst self. It's not going to be your best self. By definition, you are going to be your average self most of the time. And that is who you need to be writing these goals for and imagine pursuing these goals. Yeah, exactly. It's 
kind of tricky when you're thinking that you could do something and you're looking at it as your process is slowing down or this or that or whatever, but in reality, you wind up just getting hard on yourself and you shoot yourself in the foot. Yeah. But I mean, I think even talking about this, like, okay, give yourself twice as much time as you think it's gonna take. We always recommend that people set time-bound goals. Yeah, I keep, I keep forcing myself to yawn because it yeah. makes my eyes water and yeah. my eyes are mad dry right now. Same, actually. So if you see me yawning, I am actually tired, but I'm mostly doing it to make my eyes water so I can blink, 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 and they will be able to see a little bit better. I wish y'all could see the scenery right now. It's actually I know. really it's beautiful. It's freaking gorgeous. Lakes and mountains, sun is out. Can I? Can you open my water and hand me a sip of it? It's down by Yeah, hand. sure. Okay, so what I was saying is like, we're talking about the best case scenario where somebody actually took the time to define their goal, sit down, write it out, and come up with a time frame for that goal. And the fact of the matter is, most people don't do that. They just say, for example, I want to lose weight. I want to look fitter. And that is where that goal definition ends. Way to fill in the gap there, babe. Ha! <laughs> I was wondering where you were going with that. Thanks I wasn't sure if you were going to finish it up. So, um, if you did not set a goal, like set a time frame or a pace that you want these changes to be happening at, it is really easy to just look at the scale week to week and think that it's happening too slow. Yeah. So are you suggesting to focus on other goals, including goals outside of your pictures and your measurements? Not really. Mostly I'm encouraging people to come up with a time frame first and foremost. But okay. I think a lot of people think they're going slower than they actually are because, well, for a bunch of reasons. So you're thinking about like how progress gets masked? How progress gets measured, really. Like, how are we measuring mm. progress? What's the number one way people measure progress? Oh, the scale, hands down. What's the number way we measure progress? I mean, there's so many ways. It depends on the goal. Really? Visual. But visual, but also, you know, sometimes it's performance, measurements. And what's a safe cue that we give clients to measure their progress? How are their clothes, clothes fit? Feel? Yeah. Exactly. So there are different ways to do this that are undeniable while you're still learning how to measure progress in every kind of way as opposed to getting hung up on the scale, which honestly, uh, no one is immune to that. And right. unfortunately, it's, it's an easy trigger. And uh, unfortunately, with your body being made up of 80% water, that number can fluctuate wildly. I'll use myself as an example. Right now, this past three weeks, I've been so stressed out that my body is like doing backflips. I am wildly uncomfortable and I'm swinging up and down by like four to seven pounds legit without actually I mean I probably put on a little bit of weight but I didn't put on four to seven pounds worth and it's just jumping up and jumping down jumping up and jumping down. and you'll tell you what it's stressing me out a little bit but I've been at this long enough to know like the majority of that like 75% of that probably more is just body weight fluctuating but if I was if I was if I did not know how to analyze progress outside using the scale weight, I'd probably be in a pickle right now feeling like crap and worried and who even knows? Like me eight years ago, for example, or 15 years ago, would not it would not be good. I would be feeling pretty awful. Yeah, if I mean, if you can go by your clothes fit, that's great. The reality is, again, most people are gonna go by the scale. They just are. And, and you know, if your goal is weight loss, the scale has to move mm -hmm. at some point. You know, mm -hmm. we love to say, oh, the scale, doesn't matter because does. the scale is way less important than people think it is way less important than people think it is but if your goal let's say you weigh 200 pounds and you want to weigh 150 pounds yeah the scale's got to move eventually it's got to go down so some of the mistakes i see people make with the scale one they're weighing themselves once a week and i know this is controversial take because some people think stepping on the scale every day is like disordered yeah, but you could wind up seeing how your body weight fluctuates. You could understand better as opposed to investing so much stock in the number that you see on it once a week. You can get an idea of how your body weight trends and then you can start to make inferences and even realize why your body weight is changing. 
for any number of reasons. So there's a couple things that I usually recommend uh, with my clients. One, if they are comfortable with it, I recommend that they weigh themselves every day and record that weight. Don't just look at it and try to store it in your head. Record that weight every day. And I really like the app Happy Scale. It's free, which, you know, you can't say that about many apps anymore. And you just plug your weight in every day. And the cool thing about it, one, it gives you a rolling average of the last seven days, which is amazing because that is more important than the daily weigh-in, right? So let's say I weigh myself on day one and I'm 150 pounds. And then I don't weigh myself for another week. And on day seven, now I'm 152 and a half pounds. I'm like, what the hell? I just gained a pound and a half. I've been working so hard and I gained a pound and a half. Mm -hmm. But what I didn't see was maybe on day three, I was 149 pounds. Right. And on day four, I was 148.7. Yeah. And then I had a big meal the day before day seven and now I'm 152 and a half. And I'm thinking all I did was gain two and a half pounds. Right. When in reality, I actually hit a new low. So there's two things I have people look at. One is that rolling average. Mm -hmm. And we'll look at the change from last week's rolling average to this week's rolling average. Because it can look like nothing is happening. But when you actually look at the change in the rolling average, maybe you're down 0.7 pounds. People How seem many? to think that's zero. People seem to think something below one is zero. It is mm. not zero. Mm. If you lost 0.7 pounds every single week, religiously, mm. At the end of the it's year, you'd be down over 30 pounds. Yeah, that's major. 0.7 pounds ain't nothing, you know, as an example. Yeah. So the, that's one thing, the rolling average. Uh -huh. I have them look at that. And yeah. then the other thing I have them look for is did we hit a new low? Did we hit a new low? If we hit a new low, that's usually a pretty good sign that things are trending in a direction. It doesn't matter what day it happened on. If we hit a new low, usually that's a good sign. Three weeks, are we still thinking three weeks is the trend? Because I think your body weight could be doing backflips for more than three weeks. I. What do you mean by three weeks? Well, in other words, let's just say someone's super watery. They could be watery for more than three weeks at a time. Yeah. And still not see, and the progress can still be masked. I, you know, from my personal experience, I think within two months' time, you have to see a trend on the way down. Not to say you shouldn't see one sooner i think you should see one sooner. you should see one sooner but in but in some rare circumstances if on the periods of like extreme stress you could see progress being masked for like upwards of like one to two months in, in some extreme rare I circumstances i don't know i think it would be a very extreme circumstance they're out there they have so somebody would already have to be really really lean mm, maybe okay in starting in their starting place fair enough um or in my opinion if something isn't changing in two months it's not, the plan needs to change. Well, not that it's not body weight specifically. Yeah. Gotcha. If uh, the goal is yes. weight loss, yeah. Yes. So like, yeah, gotcha. You know, mm -hmm. if someone's goal is just like to look better. Right. Or feel better. Right. Um, or like the way they look better or achieve a certain shape, the scale doesn't need to change all the time. Mm -hmm. um, again, if part of the goal is weight loss, then it has to change eventually. But if your weight is kind of staying the same, but your waist measurement is going down, your navel measurement is going down, things like your bicep measurement or your calf measurement are either staying the same or going up, you are gaining muscle and losing fat at the same time. Mm -hmm. So even if the scale doesn't move, you are achieving something that is really hard to achieve. Mm -hmm. And you should just ride that train for as long as you can before you start actively pursuing the downward spike on the scale again. And obviously you can also tell when you see yourself getting stronger at the gym, when you're lifting more weight, you're doing more reps, et cetera, et cetera. Right. Your body has to be changing in order for those things to happen. You know? Yeah. We are at a standstill right now for a little while. It's not an accident, thankfully. I'm pretty sure it's construction judging by the signs, but... Everybody and their brothers trying to get out of Vermont today. That too. Everyone saw what they needed to see yesterday with the eclipse, and it's time to head home. Yeah. So, um, what are some other ways that people can feel like they're taking too long to get to their goal? Let's talk about muscle building, because I know fat loss mm. is the one most people are interested in, but muscle building is the slowest 
All right, and phone is overheated that is recording us, so we had to take a little break, cool off the car. We actually back. have this kind of wacky setup right now because we came up with this idea on a whim, so we don't really have the proper equipment. You have your phone taped up to the dashboard. But if you guys like it, then I will get the proper equipment. What we were talking about is muscle building and how it is an insanely, insanely slow process, yeah. and that people can feel like is taking forever because it probably is. And if people are frustrated with the speed at which they are losing fat, holy crap, are they gonna be frustrated with the rate that they are gaining muscle. You get instantly rewarded with a really nice pump and a lot of muscle inside of the first six months. And then it's a slow crawl to get more. And then you watch other people who have the body that you want for all kinds of reasons in certain ways. And you start to compare yourself to them thinking, well, that's what I want to look like, but everyone's starting from a different point when they are lifting as far as their body's shape is concerned. And there's only so much you can do to change that so fast. And there's only so much muscle that you can put on so fast. Right. And this is something that we used to say very often, and I haven't thought about it or said it for a while, but whatever you want to do in one year, unlike fat loss, when it comes to muscle changing the way that you look, when it comes to the way that you look, whatever you want to accomplish in one year, that's a five-year look. For example, whatever you want to accomplish in two to five years, that's closer to like a seven to ten year look. And it's not, it's not a five-year of sitting around doing nothing. It's five years of consistent hard work. Building muscle is a game of diminishing returns. In the first year of deliberately trying to build muscle, you'll probably build a good bit. We have to be thinking about it like that. And because when we're gaining muscle, we're usually not super lean. That's part of what is required mm -hmm. to gain muscle is that you not be incredibly lean. And when you're not incredibly lean, it's really hard to see with your eyes whether or not you are gaining muscle. So it's kind of like yeah. you just have to believe that it's happening and if there ever was a time you need to trust the process this is it because you can't see what's happening so how can you tell if you're gaining muscle well you can throw some fat loss phases into the mix so that you can see what you look like while you're focusing on gaining muscle you can focus on how strong you're getting you can like danny said trust that when you're doing things consistently for a long period of time, that things will be changing. Of all of that, I yeah. say the gym, like mm -hmm. how much are you lifting? Are right. you actively getting stronger? Because that's only gonna happen if you're building muscle. Remember strength and mm -hmm. muscle tissue mm -hmm. are a very chicken and egg scenario, right. Right? right? Do we have muscle because we're strong? Or are we strong because we have muscle? Mm -hmm. We don't know, it doesn't matter, but if you're getting stronger, you are building muscle. And that is the number one way to tell. So if you're like, I don't know if this is working, I don't know if I'm building muscle or not, are you getting stronger? If yes, then yes. And this is the hardest part because this is when the reward is no longer there. You're not seeing the change that you want to see and the things that you have to focus on are just not really exciting. Oh, are you getting in protein three times a day, a decent amount? Are you eating nutritiously? Are you sleeping well? Are you staying hydrated? Yeah, all the factors really matter here. I mean, they always matter, but again, because building muscle is a literal game of inches, mm -hmm. all of the variables have to be correct. And I think people get this backwards. They think fat loss is go time and right. muscle building is the time to kick up your feet. No. And muscle building might be the time to kick up your feet a little bit in terms of having like rigid control over every calorie that you eat. Correct. Like you can kind of chill out on that a little bit. Right. You do have to make sure you're eating enough, but if anything, your training, your sleep, your stress, all of that actually has to be better mm -hmm. than in a fat loss phase. Right, because you need all that energy to perform and you need all that energy to recover. Fat loss is literally just basically cashing the chips in for the hand that you dealt yourself and how you played your cards. Mm -hmm. You're just seeing what you got. The work is already done, but if you haven't done the work, you got nothing to show for it when you're in, after you're done with a fat loss phase. So, I mean, the hardest work should be when you're not cutting. Yes, yeah, the hardest work in the gym for sure. But again, you know, if people are 
upset that it's taking longer than they thought, then a lot of times people stop putting in the effort right. because they can't see. They're not they're not seeing the proof that what they're doing is working. Mm -hmm. So they start putting in less effort. But this is not the time to put in less effort. This is the time to put in all of the effort that you can. You have the energy to do so when you're not in a calorie deficit. So do it, right? Like the time is going, you know, it's a famous quote for a reason. The time is going to pass anyway. So you might as well be doing everything you can to try to achieve that particular goal. Yeah, I'm trying to think of ways. It's hard. The motivation really does go away when you're not cutting. It's pretty exciting to see your body change and to see the lines and the shape and the muscle and all that when you're cutting. It, it is really hard, actually, to do all the things right and all, do all the things well when you're not in a cutting phase. I think making strength goals. Yes. Like, I want to be able to, you know, for example, a strength goal I have right now, I want to be able to overhead press the 40s for sets of eight. So I'm working towards that right now. So No, but there's got to be more than that. Like, what other goals can you set or what other things can you... When you're building muscle specifically? Outside of strength. Inches in certain areas, seeing inches going up. But even then, that's not a guarantee. No. Because you can gain fat in some areas. Yeah. So I wouldn't, you know, a lot of women want to grow their glutes. So they take glute measurements and they go up when they're not dieting. And yeah. Some of it's muscle, but women store fat in their glutes. Some of it's fat, so that's a hard one to look at. But things like your bicep measurement, um, you know, is much less likely to be a high percentage of fat. So you can look at that if that matters to you. But I really think setting strength goals is key. Setting consistency goals. I know it's not sexy, but you know, I want to achieve this many days uh, in the gym. Maybe think about how the things that you do that will help you perform and recover, how they'll help your life. So in other words, if you sleep better, you'll feel better, you have more energy, you'll be a healthier person. You focus on like your basic health as a motivator perhaps, and think about ways to stay better hydrated, ways to better manage your stress, ways to sleep better, and take the, the hyper focus off of your body, your body composition, your strength and all that, and then start to think about personal growth and how it just makes you a healthier person in general. Oh, and as a side benefit, you're going to be, the gains will be coming and you'll, you'll be able to put in the work so that you'll have something to show for, for when you do cut. Yeah. Because I do feel like that even if you're not an erotic type A kind of person year round, that you wind up leaning on a certain degree of that just to be able to check the boxes off and be methodical when you're cutting. and some of that spills over into what you do when you're not cutting and I think it's healthy to move away from that kind of line of thinking and that way of doing things and the best time to do it is when you're not cutting so when you're trying to focus on growth as in muscle gain it's hel it's helpful to think about your your health in general and what you could do to just clean up your habits and just be a healthier person yeah because that's the kind of environment that you'll need also, just your mind mindset, right? Because, I mean, your brain only has so much energy that you want to devote to this. I mean, you'll get burnt out over it. Um, and I feel like a lot of people just wind up being on the quote-unquote grind year-round. And, I mean, I suppose or, you could do it, but is that really the healthiest way to do it? Yeah, or, like what you're just saying, people go so hard during their cut that by the time they're done with their cut, all of their like willpower, motivation, dedication, like all those reserves are completely depleted and they just end up going ham in the other direction and then they can't get back. And that, I've been there, like that is so tough mm -hmm. to get back to that place when you've burnt yourself out on it previously. Right. So I think, you know, something you can practice, again, I don't know how sexy these goals are, like I don't know how exciting these goals are for people, but practice going from like a death grip on your habits during a cut to loosening them but deliberately and with intention rather than just not doing anything because you no longer have you just don't have anything left you have got, got nothing left to do it with that's not like oh look at me I'm so good at not being neurotic now that I'm not in a build it's like no honey you're out of control right now that can't possibly feel good either so yeah a lot of what you're saying there. But muscle building, very slow process. So don't 
don't be mad at yourself if your gains are coming slower than they did in the beginning if you're if your progress in the gym you know we talk about progress in the gym you need to see progress but 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 if you've been training for like a couple years that progress with your lifts is going to come so slowly it's going to drive you effing nuts that you're not going to be hitting prs on your bicep curls very easily in like year three you're not that's going to come once a year maybe you know uh especially your isolations are going to be the first thing to slow down your compound movements your squats your deadlifts your hip thrusts um, your bench your pull-ups that'll those will be there for a while but the lateral raises the bicep curls the tricep press downs leg extensions leg curls those are going to start coming so much more slowly that you might think you're stalling and then the other thing is that as you start lifting more and more consistently and routinely you're going to become more technically aware of what you're doing you'll be able to move a lot better and you'll be focusing more on your movement patterns and you'll be getting a more of a sense you'll know exactly what you should be lifting and how much you should be lifting said weight on all of your exercises so it might seem like you're not progressing because you're not getting the same amount of reps or more or you're not putting up the same amount of weight or more but in reality it's because you're starting to really understand how you should be moving not just moving safely not just moving well but like really really well and that can be a little bit deflating so deflating mm -hmm. i actually have a client going through that right now and yep. she is feeling so deflated because she feels like she's having to take a step back yeah to take a step yeah. forward yep because she was making all of this progress but when we like really really looked at the form and i could tell like okay she gets it she gets it now we can really start to hone in yeah. on getting as close to perfect with these movement patterns as we sanely can right but that sometimes means taking the weight down and losing some reps, but yeah. it's still progress if you're improving the movement overall. Exactly. But it's very hard to quantify at that point. Exactly, especially when you look at some situations where there actually is regression, because let's, that is possible. <laughs> this is something we don't like to talk about because it's really hard when you want to promote lifting consistently over the course of years and decades and training really hard and not giving up and not stopping no matter what despite your best efforts progress isn't linear just because you've been consistent and you've been routine you can regress for periods of time yeah so and that's a difficult thing too that's a hard pill to swallow well, there reaches a point where you can't possibly be progressing in everything at mm -hmm. the same time anymore mm -hmm. you know in the beginning you can and that's why it's so fun and feels so magical mm -hmm. but there comes a point where like if your squat is going up yep Consistently, your deadlift might not be moving. It might even be coming back down because you're taxing yourself so heavily with the squats. Mm -hmm. For that's just one example. You know, it happens in a lot of different areas, and it is frustrating, especially you know as a longtime lifter. And people get frustrated. It's not as rewarding to see your numbers stay the same or sometimes decrease here and there. Right. And people quit. Yeah. Because it's not as fun. Nobody likes to do something they feel like they're not doing a good job at. Yeah, it's like, what's the point? I'm working my butt off. I haven't stopped for 10 years straight, and I'm losing muscle right now. Like, why? 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 But that's part of the that's part of the the game is to figure out how your goals need to shift and how you need to accept that in order to attack one part of your body, another part has to be compromised during a period of time until you figure out like how to get yourself in the overall shape that you want to get yourself in. It's not as cut and dry as... Get bigger, you, get bigger, get bigger forever. Exact, it progress, progress, progress. a lot more like finessing. Yes. Finessing of the details. Yes. And it's also why I think natural bodybuilding, blah, 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 natural bodybuilding is so much more complex than enhanced bodybuilding. Correct. Because in enhanced bodybuilding, you reach a point, you can probably just like throw something at it, throw yep. some chemical yep. at it and bust through any plateau. You have to get really thoughtful Correct. with your programming in natural bodybuilding. And the other reason one might regress, you know, let's say after 10 years, mm. is because you're 10 freaking years older. <laughs> you know, like none of us are getting any younger. Right. And it's silly to think that especially if we were a consistent lifter in our 20s, that we're going to be like crushing that lifter in our 40s. You know, if you were lifting well when you were younger and you're still lifting well, 
Like if you were doing everything right and you're still doing everything right, the difference is you're older, you know, and, and that doesn't mean that your body can stop making progress, but it might mean that you're not making quite the same strength progress that you once were. Right. So the way that you have to measure things changes. And there are some things that you face as you get older that you didn't have to face when you were younger. And sometimes you can get it wrong before you get it right and you're losing a little bit. And most of the time progress. you do. Yeah. And you competing did. too. Like let's say that you wind up doing feats of strength or you are trying to achieve a certain look, whether you're going on stage or not, you can wind up going through extreme strength gain and fat loss phases and do things improperly until you learn how to do them the right way over time. And there's the only way out is through, unfortunately, because you have to learn through experience. Sometimes even with the, the best of intentions, the right approach and the right coach, you can still get things wrong all of y'all together. It really, I mean, there is no such thing as a perfect science experiment, even if you're following protocol to a T and that can be wildly frustrating. Because mm -hmm. most of the time, most people realize like, oh, I'm getting older. I need to change the way I'm doing this because they got hurt or something. Nobody just wakes up one day and goes, you know what? I'm pretty sure I'm old now yeah. and I should change the way I do my programming. Nobody does that. We all figure it out when certain things in our body are just not performing the same way they were when we were much younger. That's how you learn is because something is gonna go wrong. <laughs> exactly. That, that sucks, but that's, Otherwise, why would somebody wake up and be like, you know what? I think maybe the big three are no longer for me because I reached this birthday. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Like, I don't know. But anyways, this this was fun. Yeah. I enjoyed doing this, even if the phone it's it is like hot as hell. We got to figure that out. Right How now. are we going to because the podcast? I mean, it's nice to podcast, that we can't run the AC while we're yeah, doing the audio it. has to be guys. So what, what do we do? Do we put like an the, ice box in the or phone something? overheated already once? Yeah, we actually have something on top of it to, to shield it from the sun. Now, uh -huh. this is one hell of a setup we have in here, but we'll figure let it us out know what you guys think. I mean, if the audio is annoying and you can't deal with it, let us know because we won't do it again. And maybe you have specific requests and certain car rides that you want us to take for future episodes or certain things you want us to talk about while we're riding or maybe you want us to have certain guests maybe we can have guests and is that oh like one of those comedians in cars That's situation exactly like, what like i was thinking vegan meatheads in cars yeah like maybe we can do one of these when we get together for plant built at mr america or the, or the fit fest yeah we'll we see. We shall see. I think I don't so. Know. Let us know what you guys think. Maybe we'll just take the microphones on our trips anyway, because sometimes a really good conversation just starts in the car. Like, wait a minute. I'm like, oh man, I wish we had made a podcast exactly. out of that. Exactly. And of course, once you say it, you can never remember nope. exactly what you said again. Nope. So frustrating. But Anyways. let us know what you guys think. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, email us, coach at veganproteins.com. If you're interested in one-on-one -on -one coaching, that is exactly what we do. We have a muscle building webinar. We should have said this at the beginning. Coming up on Saturday, April 20th. We'll leave the link for, to sign up and register for that. It's totally free. Giacomo's hosting it. Five keys to vegan muscle building. Follow us on social media, Vegan Proteins. We have a YouTube channel, which, you know, if you're looking at this, you're already watching it. But if you're listening to this on podcast, we have a lot more on our YouTube channel than comes out on the podcast. So check that out. Once again, my name is Danny. And I'm Giacomo. And we will talk to you soon. Bye.